All right, here we go. So the other day we read chapter 3 of A Day No Pigs Would Die, and we found out um, some important information in that chapter. First up, um, the beginning of the chapter starts off with Robert. He said, next day up was Saturday. I planned it that way, so I'd have me two days out of bed and out of doors without a mind for schooling. So we talked about how Robert had kind of like purposely, he was well, well enough to go to school the last probably day or two, but he kind of faked a little bit so he could stay home. Well, when his dad saw that he was well on that Saturday, what did his dad make him do? Work, work. Made him do some work, some chores. And when his dad first said, oh yeah, you look good. You're ready as rain now, boy. Then what did Robert start doing, by the way? <laughs> yeah, kind of, oh, I'm still, I'm still sore, daddy. Did his dad fall for it? No. no. So he's outside helping his dad with whatever chores they had around the house. And he looks up and he sees Mr. Tanner, Apron, and two bull calves um, headed down to their house. So Apron obviously had more than one calf, right? Which is what caused the, the birthing issue. And um, Mr. Tanner says, I got something for you, boy. And, and he gives him a pig. Now, the dad's first reaction, Lennon. What was the dad's first reaction when Mr. Tanner gave Robert the pig? He immediately wanted to return it. Yeah, yeah, he said, oh, well, no, he's just helping you out. You don't gotta pay him, he's happy to help. So the kid was upset and then Mr. Tanner said, actually, you know what, it's a birthday present, birthday present. So the dad lets him keep it. The boy names him, what's he named the pig? Pinky. Pinky, because he had like little white specks on him. Like little pink specks against the white okay um, so he named him Pinky and um, so we had that seems like there's something else I'm forgetting no I'm forgetting something talks about what a frill is what is a frill oh, it's not even nick of it a frill is something that you don't need okay like it's something you enjoy, like a PlayStation, but you don't really need a frill to survive. You know what I'm saying? And he was talking about that because his mom and his dad, they wanted oh, a bike because right. he could afford it. Right. He said he had never even had a bicycle. He was not allowed to have any frills. And he said, but anybody can see that Pinky is not a frill. She's a pig. Pinky is a frill. All right. <laughs> so we've got that. Um... I reckon that's about it. Let's start on chapter four. This page, this chapter is about 10 or 11 pages long. Keep your head up. All right, here we go. Pinky sure got to be my pig in a heck of a hurry. Pop and I had to finish our job that we started that Saturday morning, which was to reset the east fence. So after our neighbor, Mr. Tanner, took his leave, we worked for a piece. All that time I was working, Pinky was smelling around near my heels, keeping her little pink nose close to the ground as all pigs do. It was hard to get any work done when Pinky was rubbing against my boots, just like a cat. And when we quit at church bell for the noon meal, she followed us all the way across the meadow to the house. I was going to bring her in the kitchen, but Mama put her foot down on that idea. Before we ate, I mixed a bowl of milk and milk for Pinky to eat. It was real soppy, mostly milk. I didn't think she was going to take it at first, but after I dipped my finger in it and let her suck away on that, she went for the bowl. I made sure that the bowl I used was the cracked one or I'd have got skinned. Both Mama and Aunt Carrie confessed that Pinky was just about the prettiest pig they ever saw. Pinky's a fitting name, said Mama. Never heard a name in a pig, Aunt Carrie said. But Solomon has a name, I said, and so did Daisy. Let's eat. Papa said, before we have to name every weed on the place. Before what? We have to name every weed on the place. I always think the dad's a funny one. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to adjust the thing here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. Gosh. All right, now we're going to do it. All right. After meal, Papa headed out toward the barn with Pinky and me trailing along behind. He walked around the barn a yoke of times, come to a final rest on the south side of it. He put his foot on a stump, elbow to his knee. 
Look real hard at our old corn cratch. What's your mind to, Papa? Rob, that there crib would make a good house for your pig, except it's a mite too close to the cow barn. Close? It's touching it but on. Luckily, it's on skids. We can drag her. Papa, we can't drag that. We only got one ox. Solomon can do it. It would help. We're going to yoke us up next to Solomon? No, Solomon don't need muscle help. What we're going to give him, boy, is some extra thinking. We're going to let Solomon use a capstan, just a big crank. Like you, like you use it ain't Maddie's to wind up all the well water? Like that. Go get Solomon and mind his hoofs. So, have y'all ever seen like, like an old thing, like an old movie, there'd be like a well, and they have like a bucket with a rope, and it goes down into the water, and they crank it up, it brings up the water. Well, that's what they're going to do here, except they're not bringing up water. So instead of it being vertical, it's going to be horizontal, okay? I was bringing Solomon over to the barn, leading him with just my hand on his horn, and taking two steps to his one. Then I went round to the tack room to get his yoke and stays. So it says he went to get his yoke. Do y'all know what a yoke is? It has nothing to do with eggs in this case. No one knows what a yoke is? You're close. It's um, a yoke. If you've ever seen like old videos or something, or maybe like an ox or a horse or something pulling a plow, it'll have like this wooden thing on its shoulders um, with ropes and whatnot connected to the plow behind it. Okay. That thing is the yoke. I'll pull, I'll pull one up and show it to you on the video. I mean, on the TV on. in a minute. Believe me, I'm going to verify first that it's okay. It I'll show you when we're done for real. What, sweetie? Does it hurt the, Does it hurt the ox? Well, probably not. They do. It probably doesn't hurt it. Here we go. The yoke was solid hickory. and weighed near as much as me. I had to lug it ram back in two trips going back the second time for the oxbow and cotter. Papa showed up with two long poles, a chain, and a digger. With the post hole digger, do y'all know what a post hole digger is? I know I keep stopping. Do y'all know what a post hole digger is? It's like what? It digs into the ground. It digs straight down into the ground so you can put posts, okay? It's, it'll have a, like a, looks like a broom handle and a broom handle, two of them. And at the end, it has little shovels, and they're attached. Oh, yeah, you have to. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, I have one of those. Uh, yeah, it's used for digging post holes. Okay. All right, let's keep going. The old post hole digger. With the post hole digger, he twisted a hole into the ground with the meadow, excuse me, down the meadow away from the corn cratch. Using a pebble on a horsehair string, he dripped it, dropped it deep in the hole and let it hung to see if the hole was plumbed to the earth. Then, deep into the hole, he sunk one of the stout poles, so stout it was nigh to be a log. Papa said the post was about three hands around. This was the capstan's axle. Next came the tongue, and this log would be the crank handle. Papa fit the handle pole into a hole in the axle. That do it, Papa? That do her. Solomon ready? I need help, Papa. I can't put the yoke up on his shoulders by myself. How much it weigh? Oh, maybe six stone. That's as much as I weigh. Almost. Solomon was yoked and coupled to the capstan crank. We were ready. So, said Papa, you don't guess one ox can pull that there crib. Nope, I said. It's too blundersome. Not even Mr. Tanner's Bay Belgian team could move it if you want my study of it. Papa clucked into Solomon and he leaned into the yoke. The crank began to turn around and around. Solomon walked in a circle and the chain drawed up real snug. When it was tight, it stepped up off the ground, but old Solomon never stopped walking. After just once around, Papa made a trench for the chains so Solomon wouldn't have to step over with every circle. That big ox needed no priding. He walked the circle on his own and the, cr and the crib inched toward the axle post. Look, Papa, Solomon does it alone. He does for sure. Solomon told me he don't want no pig having sleeping quarters near his. Says he abides in Shaker Law. Papa, do you believe in all the Shaker Law? Let's stop there. We, we haven't discussed what shake. Are you a turtle, sir? Get your arms out. You know better than that. We haven't discussed what a Shaker is. Does anybody know? It's a religious thing. Do y'all know what a Shaker is, for real? 
Y'all, y'all know, know Amish people, like up in Pennsylvania, the people with like the hats and the long beards and they like don't have does, electricity. Like, does it like, do like cut stuff? No. Oh. no. Shakers are like Amish people who like shake when they worship. Oh, what? a literal shaker. What is, what, how much weight is six stone? Uh, well, it said 20 stone is 300 pounds. So stick six six stone would probably be uh, I don't know okay. seventy five eighty pounds, okay. All right, this is important. Papa, do you believe all the Shaker law? Most. I'm glad it's all written down in the book of Shaker. How do you know it's all written down, Papa? You can't read. <laughs> you ever said something to your parents before? And when the words left your mouth, you wanted to grab them and put them back in yeah. because you knew that a slap was coming to your face. Why would you, why, why would you just yeah, he, he probably said this. And, you know, we've all said something like, you don't really mean it to come out that way, but it sounds so bad. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at this. Look, it says, how do you know it's all written down, Papa? You can't read. <clears throat> Papa looked at me before he spoke. You ever gotten that look before? Mm -hmm. That's how my dad yells at me. He'll look at me a certain way. Like, that's how he, that's how I get the That's point. effective. Good, good, good. No, I cannot read, but our law has been read to me. And because I could not read, I knew to listen with a full heart. Might be the last and only time I'd learn its meaning. I don't cotton to all those shaker laws, especially one. Which one? One that says we can't go to the baseball game on Sunday. Jacob Henry and his father always go, why can't we? Rob, the book of Shaker forbids frills on any day, and that goes double on Sunday. So we wouldn't be playing baseball, just watching, and I want to see the Grimobis play. What's a Grimobi? It's short for Green Mountain Boy. Got something to do with somebody called Ethan Allen. I guess he was once the captain with a shortstop. I don't understand a breath of it, said Papa. I do. Our school library has this book on the history of baseball. There was a lot in it about Abner Doubleday, but it sure was skimpy on Ethan Allen. I wouldn't know one of them baseballers from the other. Well, I said, if you put any stock in this book I read, it sure leads a body to believe that Ethan Allen wasn't anyone at all and that Abner Doubleday did everything there was to be did. But that's where I went sour on the history test that Ms. Malcolm gave us. You told your ma and me you... Got the highest on that test. Were you falsing a witness, Robert? What's falsing a witness mean? Lying. Lying. Good, good, good. No, sir. I did get the highest mark. I got a 99. There were 100 questions. I only missed one. It was something about which Vermonter played a key part in our history. The answer was somebody else. But since I read that book, I just put down the name Abner Doubleday. Instead of Ethan Allen? That's right, Paul. How'd you know? Just a guess. Well... I took a guess, too, and it sure was wrong. When Miss Malcolm handed the papers back, she was a-laughing. At what? At me and Abner Doubleday. Hands off yourself completely. Oh. Solomon kept walking his circle, pulling the old corn cratch closer to the capstan post with every turn. The post was now fat with the twines of black chain. That old ox sure could pull a plenty. He wound up that big chain just like you'd wind a kite string around a spool. Papa, is it mirthful that somebody who knows history like Miss Malcolm, like Miss Malcolm knows it, has never heard of a great man like Abner Doubleday? She even asked me who he was. I suppose you thought it'd be your calling to tell her? Sure did, but one thing for certain, of the two men, Miss Malcolm tends to favor Ethan Allen. Which one you like, Papa? Can't say I take to either one. Miss Malcolm sure does. She says that seeing we live in a free country like Vermont, we all better be proud as pie over Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys. That's the baseball team. Pursuit of history sure has a foggy sound to it, said Papa, watching the chain thicken around the capstan post. It makes no sense to me. Well, it makes clear to me, except the part about Ethan Allen and his baseball team. They won at Ticonderoga. I know of that. So does Miss Malcolm. I was getting poked in the back by Will Stoddard, so I didn't rightly get the straight of it. But I do recall this much. In the middle of the night, old Ethan took his team cross late to Ticonderoga. They stayed the night in a fort. Thanks be praised, all the history I need is in our family Bible, tucked away under the bed. 
I guess it's history that calls us to move this here crack for Pinky. Hey, Papa, it's reason. Long time ago, somebody broke the shaker law, put up a cow and a pig together, and they had one walloping fight. Maybe so, said Papa. I wonder who won. Boris got a blessed mean mouth. I question who'd win if Ethan Allen met up with Abner Doubleday. I can conjure who Miss Malcolm would root for. Ethan Allen? That's for certain. She says because we're all Vermonters, we have to be proud of our yesterday just like today. What's that mean? I think it means to be proud of living Vermont, proud of Ethan Allen. What's that other feller she talks on? One who lives in a white house. Lots of folks in learning live in a white house. I think Miss Malcolm means Calvin Coolidge. We have to pride him too. Say we do, he's our president. Miss Malcolm said she voted for Calvin Coolidge, which is why he's a president. She says that every working soul in Vermont voted for him. Not all. Did you vote for Calvin Coolidge, Papa? Nope. Aren't you a Republican? Just about everybody is in the whole town of learning. No, I'm not a Republican. And I'm not no Democrat. I'm not nothing. Why not? Because I'm not allowed to vote. Me either. You had to be 21 to vote. I'm only 12. Stop there. Why isn't his dad allowed to vote? Is he what? Is he? Say it. Because he can't read. Also, something else they just said. How old How old did the boy say you have to be to vote? 21. 21. Not so anymore. Now how old do you have to be? 18. 18. Things change, right? Julian, you were going to say something, sir? Uh, I, I, I just got mixed up, so... No, I care. Alec, what, sir? Well, don't you think he was 21 when he actually? I mean, like, no, it's, it's just because he can't read. He, he can't read. He can't read. How does he know how to check the box if he can't read the name? He was asking if he was 21. The boy said, the boy said, aren't you 21? He said, you're over 21. He said, well, I can't read. Oh. All right. Let's keep going. You have to be 21 to vote. I'm only 12. Reckon I'm soon looking at 60. Then why can't you vote? Because you're a shaker? No, because I can't read or write. When a man cannot do those things, people think his head is weak, even when he's proved his back is strong. Who decides? People who look at me do not take me for what I be. Men who only see my, me make my mark, my X, when I can't sign my name. They can't see how I true a beam to build our barn or see the rows of corn into my field or straight as fences. They just see me walk the street and learning in clothes made me by my own woman. They do not care that my coat is sturdy and keeps me warm. They'll not care that I owe no debt, that I am beholden to no man. Is that why you can't vote, Papa? Yup, that's the reason. Doesn't it make you heart sick? Nope, I take what I am. We are plain people, your mother, your aunt. Your sisters, you and me, we live the book of Shaker. We are not worldly people, and we suffer the less for painting with worldly wants and wishes. I am not heart sick because I am rich and they are poor. We ain't rich, Papa. We're, yes, we are, boy. We have one another to fend to this land of ten. One day, we'll own it outright. We have Solomon here to wind up a cap stand and help us haul our burdens. And look here, he's almost done pulling that cratch where we want it pulled to. We got Daisy's hot milk. We got rain to wash up with, get the grime off us. We can look at sundown and see it all so that it wets the eye, hastens the heart. We hear all the music that's in the wind, so much music that it makes, excuse me, that it itches my foot to start tapping, just like a fiddle. Maybe so, Papa, but it seems to me that what we have most is dirt and work. True enough, but it'll be our dirt, Robert. This land will be ours in just a few more years. As to the work, what matters is that we have the back to do it. Some days I get the notion that I can't knife even one more of Clay Sanders' pigs, yet I always do, because it's gotta be done. It's my mission. We just got an important piece of information. Who's the guy that he works for? Clay Sanders. Clay Sanders. Remember that name, you're going to see that name again. Do you have it written down? No, not yet, because it's the first time we've seen it. Papa, is that the mission they preach on in church? It is, and every man must face his own mission. Mine is pigs, and I'd be thankful to be in the picture. What picture? The picture of Vermont, boy. You know what? Y'all listen to this. You know what makes Vermont a good state? No. Simple as beans. Here in this state, we know just two things. 
We can turn grass into milk and corn into hogs. I'm going to stop there. Jackson, how do they turn grass into milk? Uh, the, cow eats. the cow eats the grass? They milk the cow. Tristan, how do they turn corn into hogs? The hogs eat the corn. Hogs eat the corn, okay. and they eat the hogs. You all right? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's keep going. I think that's kind of a cool little phrase. Is somebody still on the door? Mm -hmm. oh. All right. I guess that's true as a taproot. Truer. Walking in his circle, Solomon snorted as if to say he blessed the whole business. They sure is a passel of corn and meadow land in these parts, I said. If we turn all this kind and that to milk and hogs, blessed we'd ever keep with it or just keep it in sight. Probably wouldn't be we all dreamers like you. No, Solomon's a dreamer too, yet he walks his circle. Just look how he drugged that corn cratch. Plenty far. I couldn't believe it. Just while Pop and me were talking, Solomon drove that old corn cratch into place and moved it a ways that was twice as Papa was, twice as long as Papa was tall. And then Papa added some fresh cut timber to winter tight the cratch for Pinky. Papa? Yup. You using fresh wood? Yup. Don't it got a season for you build with it? Indoors, yes. But you can wood up a wall to stand outdoors and fresh wood will season itself. With a hand turned, Papa sunk holes into the fresh planks at both ends and into the old wood beyond. In each hole, he used a mallet to pound in a trunnel peg of white oak that he had soaking in linseed oil, and the style was done. Pinky slept in it her first night with us. So did I, because the way I figured it, she'd be lonesome in a new place and away from her big fat old mall. So together, we nestled down into the clean straw under what was left of Mr. Tanner's old horse blanket. Pinky next to me that night, I guess I must have been the luckiest boy in learning. And that's where we're stopping. Don't forget what we read because we won't be reading again for a week. We won't read tomorrow because we've got the test. And, and then we got Mardi Gras, okay? All right. <laughs>